Hey everybody, welcome to the video. So we're breaking down the six game MLB DFS slate for today on DraftKings. And it is a pretty good one. We got the best pitcher in baseball, Shane Bieber, on the mound tonight. We also have the Dodgers in Coors Field. So should be a pretty exciting slate. But before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, you might as well hit the subscribe button. And we're all season long trying to help you guys become better MLB DFS players. And they cover other sports as well. So if you're going to keep coming back to the channel each and every single day, or each and every single week, you might as well hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post new videos. And if you don't follow me on social media, my handles are in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. And if you want to support content over on Patreon, always much appreciated. We got over 300 members. You can hop into the Discord chat, chat it up with me all day, hang out, ask me questions, whatever you prefer. And you get access to my entire MLB DFS data sheet as well. And I have other sports that I have available on there too. So if you're interested, Links down below. If not, that's fine. Let's just dive into today's slate. So, this is a Shane Bieber slate, and you guys know I absolutely love Shane Bieber. I am an Indians fan, so anytime he's on the slate, I'm going to be pretty pumped about it. And he gets a perfect matchup here versus Detroit. Detroit is a team I like using right-handed pitching against. They do have somewhat, some, some little bit of power this season to righties, but they are striking out at a very high clip. Nearly, uh, what, nearly like almost 30% this season. I believe it's at, yeah, 28.6% to righties this year. A low 7% walk rate. A little bit of pop 180 ISO, but two the batting average and an 89 WRC+. Plus. And Shane Bieber is just an absolute monster. If you're looking at his numbers this season, they are so, so good. A very shiny 1.53 ERA, but an XFIP below 2, which is just super, super elite. 1.95 XFIP, a 41% K rate, only a 29% hard contact rate and 0.84 home runs per nine innings. And if you're looking at his game log this season, his worst game is 19 fantasy points. <laughs> that's pretty darn good when that's been your floor. He's over 100 pitches in pretty much almost every single start. The strikeouts are there each and every single week. And I just see no reason not to play Shane Bieber, to be honest. The last time we played Detroit this season, he scored nearly 40 DraftKings points at 39.4, struck out 11 on 98 pitches in seven innings. I mean, it's easy to say, but Shane Bieber is the best pitching option on this slate. And Vegas, if you look at those numbers, 2.87 implied team total for Detroit, which is going to be the lowest on the slate. He's a very, very heavy favorite for the 71% chance for the win. So absolutely love Shane Bieber. I think he's probably a lock for cash games. If you want to get a little bit different in GPPs to afford some bigger bats, I don't mind that. But Shane Bieber is a guy you're going to end up plugging in cash games or probably for single entry GPPs. Although I will say, the way these SP1s have been going lately, it would not surprise me if something stupid happens as Shane Bieber has his worst outing of the year. Uh, last night, we had uh, Jacob deGrom. I don't know what happened. He ended up having to leave the game, but he just did not look sharp, and he sucked early on, and he scored, what, negative two fantasy points, I believe? And then Jack Flaherty the night before that, he was a very high-owned pitcher. I believe he was around 70% owned in cash games, and he gave up nine runs. So that's a back-to-back -back nights where the... Uh, arguable sp1 on the slate has gone negative which is crazy you know but that's what happens at least you probably survived with jacob Degrom tonight because he was 90 percent owned in cash games so it really didn't hurt you and flaherty was also 70 percent owned the night prior but it's just been a weird trend of these sp1s not doing too well so but anyway shane bieber he's pretty much as safe as it gets and look the upside is insane for shane bieber here so definitely the sp1 here Aaron Nola, 10,100. You're probably not playing both because it's going to be hard to fit in guys you want, especially if you want to play some Dodgers. I could see a scenario where you do play both. There are some decent value bats on this slate, but I feel like it's not last night where we played a Grom and Garrett Cole. It was a little bit easier because they were a little bit cheaper, but I still like Nola here. He's having a pretty darn good season as well. I'm going to get overshadowed. His numbers are going to get overshadowed here by Shane Beer, but still very good numbers. A very good 2.4 ERA with an XFIP that's pretty much the same exact as his ERA at 2.44. So he's not getting lucky. He's not getting unlucky. He's been pretty much performing how he should has he should have been. And a 36% K rate, 6% walk rate, not giving up too much power either. So I think Aaron Nola is fine. The matchup versus the Mets, it's kind of so-so. But if you're looking at their numbers, 122 WRC plus two righties, which is pretty high for on the offensive side of the ball. But... 346 Woba, 278 batting average, 20% K rate. The matchup's not great for Aaron Nola, but he's been one of the better pitchers in baseball this season. If I can just pull up his game log really quick, looking at his numbers. Yeah, he's coming off a 41-point outing versus Miami where he struck out 10 to start before that versus the Mets. 
He scored 20.6 DraftKings points, did give up 6 runs, only 3 were earned and 8 hits, but he still struck out 10, which was still an okay fantasy day, then 37, 27, then he faced the Mets earlier in the season on August 15th, and he scored 32 points versus them, striking out 10 once again, so I think Aaron Nola is a fine pivot off of Bieber. If you can play both in a perfect world, yeah, you, I think you should go for that, but if you had to pick between the two, I will side with Shane Bieber, even though he's $800 more expensive, but... It's Shane Bieber versus Detroit. I don't think I have to explain that too much more. Then Framber Valdez, 9,200. Probably a bit more viable at SP2 because you can save nearly $1,000 off of Aranola. Has he been as good as Aranola? Certainly not, but he gets a great, great matchup here versus the Rangers, who just are absolute trash offensively this season. They have an implied team total of 3.77. Valdez got seven strikeouts over in Vegas, and he's a pretty decently high favorite as well. Now, looking at his numbers, they're not bad. It's just if you're comparing them to Aaron Nolan and Shane Bieber, they're not going to look as pretty. But a 4 ERA, but a 3.33 XFIP, a 24% K rate, only a 6% walk rate, and he's getting a lot of ground balls as well. The hard contact rate's at 43%, but he's not giving up many home runs at 0.78 home runs per nine innings. But I'm really just interested in the matchup for the most part. If you're looking at the Rangers splits versus lefties, 25% K rate, 5% walk rate, 145 team ISO, 236 batting average. Sorry, he only has 71 WRC plus. So, Amber Valdez, 9200 feels a bit pricey, but he's been fine this season. There's certainly upside in this matchup, and I think he makes a fine SP2. I say SP2, but he's 9200. He feels like an SP1, but when you have Nair Nolan and Shane Bieber on the slate, I guess he'd be an SP2. Then two mid-range guys, which I think are fine if you want to spend up a little bit on your bats. I'd probably prefer Tanaka over Hudson, but both guys are in some decent spots here. But Dakota Hudson, I say Hudson, Dakota Hudson, gets a really soft matchup here versus Pittsburgh in a pitcher-friendly park. Not a huge strikeout guy, 22% K rate this season, and the walk rate's up to 9% as well, but gets a lot of ground balls, especially versus righties, but... Pittsburgh's been super, super bad versus right-handed pitching this season. Looking at their splits, halfway decent versus lefties, but versus righties, a 53 WRC plus, 249 Woba, 200 batting average, 6% walk rate, 25% K rate, and a 112 ISO. Very soft matchup here as a righty versus Pittsburgh, and at 8,200, you're getting a pretty average pitcher for the most part, but I don't think he's going to kill you, and he's certainly got 20-point upside, so I don't mind Hudson. Then Masahiro Tanaka at 7800 I like the price point, and I don't mind the matchup versus Toronto. I mean, it's not my most favorite matchup in the world, but I think Tanaka is going to be fine. Looking at his past couple of starts, he has done pretty good since August 26. He scored 17, 24, 13, and 20. We also saw his pitch count the last two starts at 95 and 91. So we're not going to worry about a pitch count. Should be around 100 pitches here. And only 7 to 800, I think he's fine. His numbers this year, I guess, aren't great. He's not walking, guys. They're only a 3% walk rate and a 31% hard contact rate. But a 4.35 XFIP compared to his 3.16 ERA. So I guess he's getting a bit lucky. And he's giving up a lot of fly balls and home runs at nearly one and a half home runs per nine innings, which isn't encouraging. But I like the price point. It's going to allow you to fit in an extra course feel bad if you choose to go that route today. So I don't mind Tanaka at 7,800. But just know the best pitching option today by far is Shane Bieber. And it's just really a matter of who you pair him up with. All right, now we'll move on to the bats. Catcher, not a lot going on at catch today, so I just listed the two course field bats here. I mean, if you have someone else that fits at the end of your lineup, go for it. I don't really care who you play a catcher for the most part. But these are the two guys I'm going to single out. Will Smith, 4,600. Better versus righties. If you're looking at his numbers versus righties, they're very, very good. But versus lefties, he's still fine. A 476 on base percentage, 155 WRC+, a 270 batting average. The power isn't as high, but... Look, we're in Coors Field, and I'll, I always have memories of the Dodgers in Coors Field quite some time ago. This was not this year. It was either last year or the year before, but they just absolutely smashed in Coors. It was just a sight to see. But anyway, like all the Dodgers had the highest team total on the slate at 6.43. This is definitely the best place to go for offense, but that does come with a price for most of these guys. So a lot of these guys aren't going to be absolute cash locks like, you know, Mookie Betts, great play, super expensive though, Cody Bellinger, Max Muncy. And I'm trying to think if I for anybody else off the top of my head. But these guys aren't absolute cash locks because they're really expensive. And I'm going to prioritize Bieber and pitching. But they're still excellent, excellent options like Will Smith. Then Diaz at 2,500 is a cheaper option in Coors Field. The Rockies only have a team total of 5.07 versus Urias. But he's okay. I mean, he's just a cheap catcher in Coors Field. That's pretty much as in-depth as I'm going to go. 
Going down to first base, we have Luke Voigt at 4,900. He is just con he's just been crushing baseball re recently. He just went deep once again. And if you're looking at his splits this season, he's been great versus lefties. He's also been great versus righties. A 300 batting average to righties this season, over a 300 ISO, over a 400 Wobo, and he's just had elite numbers. The Yankees just got done going off last night. I think they scored over 13 or 14 runs. Now, I'm not going to expect that once again. It's still a good spot here. Chase Anderson isn't the worst pitch in the world, but he's not the best pitch in the world either in this lineup. It's definitely got some pop in it, so definitely think we can use some Yankees tonight. Although, I do think the Dodgers are the best place to go for bats, but I don't mind the Yankees either. They do have a team total of a nearly 5.5, so don't mind Voight. Then, Paul Goldschmidt, 4,600, going up against a pretty below-average lefty in Stephen Brohl. He's definitely a guy that's going to give a power to right-handed bats. This one doesn't get a lot of strikeouts versus righties either, and he will walk them quite a bit. And Goldschmidt, he's got great splits versus lefties with a 273 ISO, 529 on base percentage, and a near 200 WRC plus with a 35% walk rate. So Goldschmidt, 4,600, he is totally viable. And then Carlos Santana at 3,600. Like, he's not a big power guy. He's also gotten a lot of ground balls this season, 42% to righties and 54% to lefties. But... He finds a cheap lefty option here versus Casey Mize. Then going down to second base, DJ LeMayhew, he went double dong last night. He's super expensive. I don't really ever love paying this much for DJ LeMayhew because I don't really ex usually expect him to have a bunch of power. But he's an elite contact hitter, and he's certainly one of the better, better uh, bats in the league just from a pure hitter standpoint. But I like him. 5,400, he's fine leading off for the Yankees, one of the better stacks on the slate versus Chase Anderson. So... I mean, he's okay. Uh, Kika Hernandez at 4,100. This is just cheap Dodgers exposure, which doesn't really come too often on this slate. Like, we even got Chris Taylor all the way up to, I believe, 4,800. If I can, Yeah, he's all the way up to 4,800. A lot of these Dodgers bats are going to be over 5K. Mookie Betts is 6K. Ballinger is 57. Muncie, I believe, is mid-5K uh, mid range. Corey Seager is up there as well. So, uh, few and far between <laughs> are for these cheaper Dodgers bats. So, if you can take them, like Kika Hernandez... And AJ Pollock, I don't mind that at all because they're like really the only Dodgers that are decently priced here. Boy, they're in a great spot versus a lefty in Coors Field. And Jose Altuve, 3600 just still too cheap, I think. I mean, I know he's not been great at all this season, but Jordan Lowes is just not a very good pitcher. And the Astros are going to be one of the better teams to stack on this slate. They're, all, they're, not, they're not all that expensive either, so... I don't mind. I prefer all two-way versus lefties. If you're looking at a splits this season, they're pretty gross versus either. I mean, the numbers have just been awful for Jose Altuve, and he's certainly in a huge decline this season. And it may just have something to do with him not knowing what pitches are coming towards him. But I like the price point. I do like the Astros here, and Jordan Lyles is just not a very good pitcher. I really don't think you have to know what Jordan Lyles is throwing you beforehand to be able to hit the ball off him because teams have had no issues with that so far this season with them. Very low strikeout pitcher, 14% to lefties and 10% to righties, and he struggles versus either side of the plate. Actually struggling more versus the righties this season with a 475 Woba compared to a 311 Woba, but the entire lineup is playable here, and I don't mind that price tag on Jose Altuve. And Mike Freeman, if he's hitting near the top of the order at 2500 he is fine just for the salary relief. Looking at his numbers this season, not going to be all that impressive. 85 WRC+, 260 batting average, and a 25% carry with not a lot of power, but it's just a cheap price play if you want to fit in your studs like Shane Bieber and Aaron Nola on this slate. Going to the third base, we have Nolan Arenado versus a lefty in Coors Field, so definitely going to be interested anytime a lefty's on the mound. In Coors, you're going to have interest in Arenado and Story pretty much every single time, unless it's someone like Clayton Kershaw and kind of guys like that. But even then, they're still playable. But if we look at Arenado splits versus lefties this season, not as good as it's been the past couple of seasons, but it's still a smaller sample size overall. But in your 300 batting average, a 6% strikeout rate. So he's making contact. It's just only a 159 ISO when, I mean, some of the power numbers really haven't been there. But it's Arenado versus lefty in cores, so I'll be interested. Max Muncy, 5200. People might shy away from the lefty on lefty matchup, but Muncy's actually just fine versus lefties. I mean, he's got more power to righties, but still a 184 ISO to lefties, a 377 on base percentage, 121 WRC plus. And if you actually look at last season's numbers, Muncy actually had more power versus lefties, but I think he's fine. People are going to shy away from the lefty on lefty matchup, but if you got the money for him, like at the Dodgers bat in course field with the highest team total on the slate. And then going down to Alex Bregman, 5,100. His price rose a little bit. I believe he was 4,800 last night. Now, the Astros did absolutely nothing versus Kyle Gibson. They didn't even score a run, which was very, very embarrassing because Kyle Gibson is not that great of a pitcher. But I think they'll fare better here versus Jordan Lyles. And like Alex Bregman, he's fine versus lefties and righties. Prefer him versus lefties, but 
Still has over a 4 on base percentage to right-handed uh, pitching this season. So he's fine for stacking up the Astros, one of the better stacks on this slate. And one of my dog wants off my lap. Okay, he is off my lap now. But anyway, Justin Turner, 5,000, up against a lefty in Coors Field. He's always had some great splits versus lefties. If you're looking at his numbers this season, they're very. it's a very limited sample size. I wouldn't put any stock into it. But last season, he was over a 300 ice at the lefties and just overall very, very good numbers. So, yes, I do like Justin Turner. He's very expensive, and every single third baseman I have here that listed is really expensive. But I didn't love any of the value bets, and I think third base is just a position you should probably spend up on because you have a lot of elite options here. If you're using Rockies, you can use Arenado, Dodgers, Max Muncy, or he's also eligible at first base as well. Then Justin Turner, and if you're using some Astros, you got Alex Bregman. So we're going to have to go value hunting a couple of spots today if we're going to spend up for Shane Bieber, which if you pair him with Tanaka, it won't be too bad. But if you wanted to use Shane Bieber and Aaron Nola, you're going to definitely have to scrape for some value a bit, but I think third base is probably going to be one of the spots you want to spend up on. Shortstop, I wouldn't mind spending up at shortstop either. You have two elite options here in Trevor Story and Corey Seager. Trevor Story is crushing left-handed pitching this season with over a 340 ISO, 342 batting average, 186 WRC+, and a 481 on base percentage. And those numbers are even better if you just look at Coors Field splits specifically. So yeah, Trevor Story is obviously going to be a great option here. Now, Corey Seager, 5,300. It's a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup, so people will probably shy away, but they'll get to the bullpen at some point anyway. If they can get to Friedland quick, We'll definitely see some righties out of the bullpen. And Corey Seager still has okay numbers versus lefties this year. Now, versus righties, he's been one of the best batters in baseball. Like The numbers are just absolutely elite for Corey Seager versus righties. But versus lefties, a 170 ISO, 105 WRC plus, 255 batting average is not great. But I'm assuming they're going to get to the bullpen. And look, it's course field. So definitely think the Dodgers should be able to mash here. But they are super, super expensive. And Chris Taylor, 4,800. I don't like that price tag, but it's still a cheap right. Eh, say cheap, but cheaper righty. In Coors Field versus Kyle Freeland on the best offense of the slate. Then Paul DeYoung here at 3,900. Actually a bit better versus righties, and that was true last season as well. But he's cheap at 3,900. Go up against lefty Stephen Brolt, who will struggle with right-handed bats. And they do have a team total of 5.01. Not a great park for hitting, but I don't mind the price tag here for Paul. And then going down to the outfield, we have Mookie Betts, 6,000. Now, I've noticed quite a few of these expensive right-handed outfielders, like in some of the best players in baseball, Mookie Betts, Mike Trout, Ronald Acuna. They've struggled with lefties this season. Like Mike Trout's not hitting lefties very well. Acuna's not hitting lefties very well. And uh, Mookie Betts is also not hitting lefties very well, which I find kind of odd. But still, he's one of the best batters in baseball, especially in the NL. And look, it's Coors Field. And I love all the Dodgers. So if you got the money for Mookie Betts, yes, he's a fine option. I don't think he's going to struggle versus Kyle Freeland. He's been much, much better versus righties, and I, you know, they'll see a righty at some point in the bullpen, assuming Kyle Freeland doesn't just complete game uh, shut out the, the Dodgers, which I don't think is going to happen, although I've seen crazier things happen before this season. But, yes, I like Mookie Betts if you got the money for him. Cody Bones are going to be hitting to the bottom of the order here versus a lefty, but I still don't mind him just because it's course, but he's certainly not a must play. He's just fine if you're stacking up the Dodgers. But, I mean, if I for 300 more, I could get Mookie Betts is going to be leading off here. So I'll start with Mookie, but I think both are fine for tournaments. Then dropping down to the mid-range, we have George Springer and Kyle Tucker here, both going up against uh, Jordan Lyles, who just is not that great of a pitcher and has pretty much struggled in almost every single start he's made this year. If you're looking at Springer splits versus lefties, he's better versus, uh, versus righties, I should say. He's better versus lefties, but versus righties... 188 ISO, 377 on base percentage, kind of so-so numbers, but I do like the Astros stack on this slate, and Vegas does as well. And as for Kyle Tucker, he's got a near 300 ISO versus right handed pitching this season, and a near 600 slugging, so I think he's fine at his price point of only 4,400. And he's going to be here in the middle of that order. So Carlos Stanton at 4,300 just seems a bit too cheap here. If you're looking at his numbers, it's too small of a sample size to put any stock into it. But we know Stanton crushes lefties, and he's still got good numbers versus righties. Now, he'll strike out quite a bit. But, look, I do like the Yankees on the site. They have a team total of 5.61, and that price tag of only 4,300 does stand out quite a bit for Giancarlo Stanton. So I think he is certainly viable. And the best play on the slate is going to be A.J. Pollock here. And I know there's an error pulling up his name because sometimes it uses A dot J dot. But I'm using just pure A.J. here. But anyway... Pretty much the best play on the slate, and I would imagine he's going to be the highest owned bat on the slate. He's only 4200 uh, They forgot to give him the Coors Field price bump, and he's going to be hitting cleanup as he usually does versus lefties. I mean, I wouldn't assume that's going to change here. So assuming he's betting cleanup, A.J. Pollock is just going to be an absolutely elite play. I don't really care where he's hitting, to be honest, but 
definitely a boost to back cleanup, but he's been fine versus lefties this season. He's always been fine versus lefties in his career, only a 13% strikeout rate, 357 batting average, 170 WRC+, plus, 360 batting average, which I think I just have already mentioned, and over a 300 ISO and over a 400 Wobos. So AJ Pollock, absolutely love the play here, only 4,200. Expect him to probably be the highest on bat on the entire slate because everyone's going to have the same idea that I just said. Then Michael Brantley, 3,500, just a cheap lefty here versus Jordan Lyles. Brantley's always been an elite contact hitter. He's always had some decent pop versus righties as well. That's holding true once again this season. is striking out a bit more, but 340 batting average, 230 ISO, 171 WRC+. 3,500, he's a nice value bat to fit in your high-end pitching studs if you choose to go that route but that's gonna be it for the video guys i hope it was helpful if it was make sure you leave a like and if you're new to the channel you might as well hit that subscribe button and it's gonna really help me out i really do appreciate it sorry if i seemed like i was starting my words a little bit it's one o'clock i slept five hours last night and i'm very tired so hopefully i didn't sound too rough in this video but i appreciate you watching uh if you want to check out the thursday night football showdown video i did post that and then I think I'll have my NASCAR video out tomorrow, so we'll have that to look forward to as well. But that's going to be it, guys. Appreciate you listening, and I'll see you in the next one. And cross your fingers and toes for an elite stud pitcher to not go negative once again tonight because I mean, two nights in a row, it's kind of ridiculous.